In this video, we'll see how easy it is to implement Tailwind CSS with React and Next.js by migrating the results of our last video over to React components. So stay tuned to know everything. Hello world, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Here you can find coding challenges and tutorials just like the one that you're about to watch. So if you enjoy that type of content, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel down below. So last time we used Tailwind CSS to create a simple but beautiful web page using only an index.html file and a link to the Tailwind CSS CDN. Now this time we're gonna go a step further and implement the exact same design but using my favorite React framework which is Next.js. So we're gonna take the code of the old HTML file and we're gonna separate it into React components. Then we're gonna style them individually with Tailwind CSS. And by the end, we're gonna see how Next.js makes it easy to route from one page to another in React. So let's get into it. So to kick this off, we're gonna go into nextjs.org. It's the next React framework. I'm gonna click on learn to see how to set up a next project. So if you click on setup, you're gonna see how easy it is to create a new next app. So like you say here, to create a next app, just on your terminal, go into the directory you wanna create the app and paste the command that they provide you. So you can do that right here. This uses npx to run the create next app module without you needing to install them. It uses a few parameters that it needs and then in the end it uses this starter template to render the code to start up our app. Okay, so now installation has completed, so we can do what it says right here, cd into the new app that we created, and run npm run dev to start our development environment. It's gonna start a server on localhost 3000, so now we can get back to the browser and go to localhost 3000 and see our new next app. So the next step I'm going to make is open VS Code in the directory of this project to edit the files. Okay, now that we're here, we're gonna take just a, a quick look on how Next.js organizes its folders. So we got a public folder where all the assets are gonna go into our images, icons, SVGs, and all you're gonna use publicly. Then there's this folder, which is pages. That's where all of your pages are gonna be created. Each page is nothing else but a React component. And you can see that the name of each file within the pages folder is going to relate back to the URL on the browser. So right now we only have one page, it's the index page and it has a React component called home. We're going to delete the entire content of this page. We're just going to place an h1 saying hello world. Okay, now this is our new page. Nothing but an hello world. So I'm gonna start by copying the code that we had previously on our index.html page. Then I'm gonna see that HTML on the browser without any stylings. And by the end, we're gonna install Tailwind CSS and see if we get the same exact result. Now I'm gonna declare a div to wrap all the content that we're gonna copy. And this is the content we had on our last stream. Let me just format this. Let's see how this turns out to be. Okay, so this is the entire code we have, and we have no styling because we need to install first Tailwind CSS. How can we do that? If you go to Tailwind CSS site, on the documentation, you can click on installation right here. And they already provide integration guides to many of frameworks and tools that you may use. So we're gonna click on Next.js and see how they recommend to use it. So we've already created our app. We're already inside the project, so we're gonna start up in this section of setting up Tailwind CSS. We're gonna install it via npm. So we are on our the new version of Next.js. We can use this one. It's gonna install Tailwind, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Back to the terminal. We can run this. So once this is, this is done, we're gonna need to create our configuration file. So it's gonna be a Tailwind configuration file. This is where you can customize Tailwinds to your likings to fit your brand. And then the post CSS config, that's gonna enable us to use the, post, the Tailwind CSS classes, compiling them to use on the page. So we're gonna copy this one, npx Tailwind CSS to init our Tailwind file. So this command created both Tailwind 
config.js and post.css config.js files. So if you go back to the project, we now have both here. Okay, so now we have a couple more things we need to address and these are following. We need to include Tailwind CSS with our CSS. We're not gonna use directly in JavaScript, we're gonna include it in a global CSS file. Now to use global CSS files with Next.js, we gotta take a look at the documentation right here. So if you go to learn again, and you click on global stylings, you're gonna learn that for, to use global CSS styles, you need to create a page called underscore app.js on our pages folder. So right here, we go to app.js and it's only the code that we're gonna copy. Now, this is gonna now become a top level component which will be common across all the different pages. So now all pages are gonna be drawn through this app component, meaning that we can now create a folder for stylings just to keep things organized. And inside we're gonna create a global, not a folder. Inside we're gonna create a global.css file. Now we can use the Tailwind directives just like they show us here. So we're gonna paste this one and for this global CSS file to be used in our new top level app component, we're gonna import that file. We're gonna go to styles, global.css. Since we added this top level component uh, to our app, we're just gonna need to restart our dev server for the pages to be rebuilt. So now if you go back to our page and hit refresh, it seems like we have the exact same page that we had before. Okay, so the first step is done. We have Tailwind CSS working with React inside Next.js. Now what we wanna make is separate all of these into components that we can reuse instead of having this repeated code here to represent the cards, for example. So we're gonna create a new folder on the root called components. So, so in components, we're gonna create two components we're gonna use. We, out of the bat, we're gonna use a footer component. We also gonna have a hero section component. And for each of the cards, we're gonna have card component. So we're gonna separate just to these three components. You could do a bit more and go even further, but I'm gonna stay stay with this. Okay, for starters, let's try and create a footer first. So we're gonna create an empty functional component called footer. Contents are gonna be the entire footer that's on the index page. So we're gonna copy all of this. I'm gonna go back to our footer, replace the content, and this should be all we had to do. Now we just need to import the footer component here. And check if our app remains the same. Let's go all the way down and we still have a footer, which is good. So the first component is done. Next, we're gonna make this hero section component. So we can already delete all of this. We're gonna go into hero section, generate the new component, paste all the content here. I'm gonna hit save, get back, import the component and use it in the HTML. Back to Safari and still have the same page. Okay, now the fun part. We want to extract each of the cards that we have. The cards are defined by each of these divs. So we have one card, then we have two, and you have two more in the back. So each of these is gonna be a card, which we're gonna copy into a new component called card, replacing the content. Just format a little bit more and add card here. So now we could change all of this, this one as well, and also this one. Okay, now if we hit save and go back again, 
can't find a variable card. So the import was not successful. Let's manually import it. Hit save and get back here. So on the surface, this page is exactly the same page we had before in terms of layout, but it all it is now all built with React, which is a lot better. Now, one extension that I really recommend you use if you're gonna be working with Tailwind is called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. What this does is detect that you're running a, an app using Tailwind. It's gonna check that you have a Tailwind config.js file in the root of your project. And then when you're writing a classes, you can just do the following. For example, this class, this hscreens class, is to make this section have a height of the entire viewport. So if we didn't know this class existed, we know that height classes start with h, so we could type h dash, and then IntelliSense would kick off and say, okay, we have all of these options. You can cycle through all of them. We have also the fractions, and then we have h full, h screen. So we wanna use this. So, so this facilitates the way of you knowing which classes you can use and where. So I'm just replacing now the classes with class names because that's the way it's supposed to be. I shouldn't be working actually without class name. But let's just replace all of this real quick and check if our app still looks the same. Now just to see how Next.js works, routing between pages, we're gonna create a new page in the pages folder and we're gonna name it hello. So now to say that this is a page, this has to export a React component. And the content can be wherever you want. So now it's gonna be hello world. So now we have a new page. If you go back to Safari and re replace the URL with hello, you see that we have on the new page that's rendering the new React component we just created. But how can we go from the index page to the new page using Next? So Next.js makes this really easy. In any page that you are, you can redirect to a new page using the Next.js link. Right here, our index page uses a hero section. So this is the one we want to change to make it go to the next one. So to do that, we're gonna import next link. And you're gonna say import from next link, link. This is the first step. So now we can use the new component we just imported. We're gonna replace our button inside the link to keep the stylings and remove this ref because now the anchor tag is not going to be responsible for redirecting us and within the link it has a href attribute and that's the one you're going to define to the page you want so it's going to be slash hello and now we go back into the index page to the top of it and if you click the button we go to our new page and it's extremely fast the way it does it and okay so this was introduction to tailwind with react on next.js we're gonna do a lot more tutorials using next.js and react i'm gonna go further into the redirection and how next helps you optimize images and all of your components that next provides to facilitate web development with react making it my favorite framework of all time and we can also go further into tailwind css configuration to fit your brand that's going to be on our next video where you can change the tailwind config.js file to extend it and do whatever you wanted with it create new colors create new variants and extend all that is already provided so that was it for this tutorial video if you enjoyed the video drop a like down below if you want to see more like this and more about tailwind don't forget to subscribe to the channel to don't miss out on any chances and if you have any problems implementing this feel free to reach out to me on twitter or on the comments down below so until next time, happy coding.